Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend and friend of furry woodland creatures. And you're listening to another wrestling podcast. But this one is the best. It's time for uh, another wrestling podcast. The measuring stick just changed around here, buddy. You're looking at it. The there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. If they, they got the answers, I change the question. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. These are the best in the world, brother. These are the best in what they do. When we talk about the legends of the sport, there's only two in my book. Another wrestling podcast. Another wrestling podcast. Now can you dig that sucker? <laughs> All right, all right. Welcome to another wrestling podcast. This is episode 90. I'm Steve Credo. And I'm Jonathan Benjamin. Wow, Jonathan, 90 episodes. Can you believe it? I can't. I can't believe that we have stuck it out this long and produced a top-notch podcast. (laughs) That's right. Uh, 90 episodes in, Jonathan. 90 episodes strong. Wow, almost to 100. That's going to be a crazy show itself. But Jonathan, we're at 90. Uh, What's happening? Uh, All kinds of stuff. We are just on the heels of the very first Northeast Tour of Global Force Wrestling. Now, if you have not got tickets yet, I don't know what you're waiting on. They're going to be live at the Mid-Hudson, the historic Mid-Hudson Civic Center, January the 22nd. You want to go ahead and throw that VIP experience on these tickets because you're going to get to see all the stars of Global Force Wrestling before you would normally get in. You're going to get to see um, and meet them. You're going to get to take pictures with them. You're also going to get to see a VIP question and answer session hosted by none other than Steve and I. So uh, that's worth the price of admission right there. But then the very next night, January the 23rd, they're going to be live with Pro Wrestling Syndicate in Rahway, New Jersey. And uh, tickets for that can be found on ProWrestlingSyndicate.com. That's right, Jonathan. We are so spoiled here uh, in the Northeast of all this wrestling. I know everybody out there listening to us from all over the world is jealous of the Northeast right now. So, Jonathan, just for another wrestling show to come up to our neck of the woods is is awesome. So, Pro Wrestling uh, is, is happening up here in the Northeast, and I'm glad to see Global Force step up. Uh, Jonathan, if people want to get tickets for the 22nd, also head on over to the MidHudsonCivicCenter.com and also go to GlobalForceWrestling.com and make sure you find out everything uh, over there. And Jonathan, they also announced the lineup uh, that's going to be happening in Poughkeepsie. So if you haven't heard it yet and you're not sure, you know, should I come? Should I stay home? What should I do? Well, Jonathan, we're going to tell you right now why you should definitely come out to January 22nd in in Poughkeepsie, New York. There's going to be three Global Force Wrestling titles on the line that night in Poughkeepsie. We're going to have Nick Aldis, formerly known as Magnus. He's the champion, the Global Force uh, Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. He's going to be taking on Bobby Roode. Wow. Uh, that's right there. That's uh, one one hell of a match. That's one championship match. Jonathan, another championship match is the Global Force Wrestling Next Gen Championship where Sanjay Dutt, the champion, will be taking on Jigsaw. Also, Global Force Wrestling Women's Championship where Christina Von Erie, the champion, will be taking on Mickey James and also Kimberly and also Deanna Perrazzo, uh, a four four person women's championship match. It's going to be crazy. Not only will you see that, but you'll also see Jeff Jarrett versus Cole Cabana, the new Heavenly Bodies versus the Reynolds brothers, Kevin Matthews, Pat Buck, and Amazing Red versus Trevor Lee, Andrew Everett, and Brian Myers, formerly known as Kurt Hawkins, uh, Henry Maxwell versus Cody Diener. Guys, tickets are available. Get them before they sell out. The Mid Hudson Civic Center box office or at any Ticketmaster location. Charge by phone at 1 800 745 3000 or head on over to MidHudsonCivicCenter.com. And joining us today on the show is a woman who needs no introduction. She is Mickey James. She's going to be joining us, uh, talking a little bit about Global Force Wrestling and a whole lot more. So stay tuned for that one. And everybody in the Poughkeepsie area, make sure you head on over to the Poughkeepsie Galleria this Saturday uh, to meet Christina Von Erie, Global Force Wrestling's women's champion. She'll be there from 2 to 4, signing autographs, taking photos for absolutely no charge at all so uh, make sure you head on out there 
me and Jonathan will be there. We'll say hi to everybody. And uh, if you haven't yet, you could probably also pick up some uh, GFW tickets for next Friday. So make sure you come out tomorrow from 2 to 4. Now, we had a little contest uh, to give away some Global Force Wrestling tickets uh, where you could either Instagram us, Facebook us. You can even call the AWP hotline and leave a message. And I'm going to announce those winners right now. And in no particular order at all, we had Patricia Narvisa and Teresa Baker, who sent us photos on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, they are getting a pair of tickets to go see GFW. And also Bertram James from Poughkeepsie, uh, who also called the AWP hotline and said this. Hey, Jay, stay breezy, James, Mark for life, if you know what I mean. Listen, another wrestling podcast, there's nothing bad that could be said about it. It keeps it real, it keeps it wrestling, it keeps us informed, and it's fun to listen to. GWF, I'm saying, Jeff Jarrett, been an icon for how long? The card is amazing. I would travel anywhere for wrestling. I went to that last card out in Queens with my little Mark Amir, 13 years old. Thirst for wrestling. Hard times right now. So it's a bit, we don't know if we're going to be able to make it out there. So the best way we can try is to win some tickets. So hopefully we're in consideration. Me and my little Mark can be in there for that event on the 22nd at the Civic Center, where it's always amazing. Another wrestling podcast. Keep it going, baby. One. Once again, congratulations to Patricia Narvisa, Teresa Baker, and Bertram James. You guys are all going to Global Force Wrestling next Friday at the Mid-Hudson Civic Center in Poughkeepsie, New York. Now, uh, for those of you who didn't win on another wrestling podcast, uh, hey, the tickets are still available, uh, so make sure you get them before they sell out. So uh, you do not want to miss this show Friday. From all of us uh, here at another wrestling podcast, which is just me and you. Yeah, there's only two of us. <laughs> it just makes it sound like yeah. there's more a lot more people yeah uh but yeah it, it's going to be an experience i mean poughkeepsie is the i like to call it the capital of pro wrestling there's so much history that has happened here at the mid Hudson civic center so if you guys are listening you've never been up here uh you're in the tri-state area or beyond head on out here it's going to be uh one day to remember i guess you could say yeah and this is just uh if if you like professional wrestling and you want more professional wrestling events to come to the mid hudson civic center then you need to pack this building on the 22nd to show people in charge that we want wrestling and uh i think that global force is going to be awesome and i can't wait to see it and it's going to be our first global force wrestling show and i think that it could be one of many so let's right. let's pack the center that's right hashtag pack the center Hashtag pack the center. <laughs> well, it's trending. You know, uh, everybody listening out there, head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. All of our shows, all of our episodes, uh, we are on episode 90. That means there's 89 episodes before this one, and you can download them all on our website. Uh, make sure you head on over there, anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you, so let us know. Uh, Steve, a lot of times whenever we're talking... I feel like I want to just like punch you in the face. <laughs> Jeez, um, what did I do? No, I mean it's nothing. It's nothing bad. It's just you know. Um, hey, so, Steve, I just want to punch you in the face today. Well, okay. Um, I get fired up about wrestling, and I want to. You know, I, I would love to to actually get in the ring sometime and uh, try it out, but it's way too difficult for me. But uh, I thought it would be good to talk maybe about professional wrestling injuries now it was a huge that's why you want to punch me in the face yeah that's why i want to punch you see that was a segue we 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 talk about this all the time but there was um there were a lot in 2015 yes um and the hits keep on coming in 2016 no literally literally uh so it's it's hard to find um out exactly what is going to happen for wrestlemania what's going to happen to the you know the roster so um i guess is does WWE have like a plan for this or do you think that it's just taking them by surprise and they don't know what to do? Well, well, for everybody listening, let's just go back and just really tell them like who's out, what's happening. Because, uh, 
for everybody who says pro wrestling's fake, well, here's the reality of it, kids. Uh, you get injured. It's a sport. Uh, it, it puts a toll on your body. And just recently, Jonathan, we've had John Cena, Cesaro, uh, Tyson Kidd, Hideo Itami, Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, Nikki Bella, Sin Cara, Daniel Bryan, Sting. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's a few others within this injury list of 2015. Uh, but a lot of these guys are still currently out, are out right now. They're probably not going to return until after WrestleMania, which is a big hole in the card uh pretty much every championship or no, every champion or a lot of the winners from last year's wrestlemania are out on injury this year so it's it's definitely it's it's what's going to happen because i mean this is the reality of it kids uh, you know when when you get injured you have to get surgery or, or something else or you got to wait till your body heals to come back and for a lot of these superstars you know this is their life and being out for a week could take a toll. Being out for two months is, you know, being out for longer than that, six months, seven months. Sami Zayn was out for just seven months too in NXT. So it's crazy. The longer you're out, the more you're off TV, the more you're off TV, the more people forget about you, the more they forget about you, the lower your stock is, you know, and so on and so forth. So, you know, these guys, these wrestlers, these women, uh, you know, this is their life. They need to be on TV. They need to be seen. They need to be in the, in the forefront of all this. And without them being, anywhere uh you know it, it hurts them and then it also probably could hurt the company uh in a certain aspect but you know like we were saying wrestlemania is just a few months away a few weeks away if you really want to count it like that but um you know what do they do they have to you know it's crunch time we're, we're a few weeks away from the royal rumble which is the road to wrestlemania and uh you know that's you know we're trying to build towards wrestlemania with all these guys out jonathan what do we do well I think it's kind of interesting the the breakdown of this. If you look at some of these guys, if you look at um, Cena, Orton, um, I think even Cesaro, Wade Barrett, um, we didn't That's mention right, him. Wade, yeah, um, they're all like arm shoulder surgeries uh, or injuries. Sin Cara as well, I think. Um, you know, if you look at Daniel Bryan, Sting, um, Tyson Kidd, they're all neck injuries. And, um, you know, Daniel Bryan also had concussion issues, but for the most part at the, the base of the problem was the neck. Um, how did, you know, and Seth Rollins obviously blew out his complete and total knee. So that, that didn't help anything, but yeah, like you were saying, WrestleMania is coming. What does WWE do? Um, there's a lot of rumors going around right now about having people come in from outside of the company. I think that could help. I think also they've got a lot of great people kind of waiting in the wings. You've got NXT people that could possibly come up. And yeah. I'm not talking about depleting the entire roster of NXT. I'm talking about, you know, being smart about this. I think Enzo and Cass could have came up a long time ago. Mm. I also wish that they would have won the NXT titles yeah. before they came up. But I think Enzo and Cass are ready. Um, but also I think that there's a lot of great talent right now in the WWE, and it's a sink or swim moment for them. Roman Reigns right now is going to have the entire world on his back, you know, whether he wants that or not, I don't know. And whether he will do good with that, I don't know. But, you know, guys like Dean Ambrose, guys like Kevin Owens, guys like Cesaro, there's a lot of people out there right now that have been on that level for a long time, but they got outshined by maybe, you know, a John Cena or Seth Rollins or whatever. And now they can really take that brass ring that everybody talks about and show the WWE and the world that they belong in, in the WWE. And, um, obviously in Nikki Bella's absence, we've had some great women's wrestling with, you know, Charlotte and Paige and Becky Lynch and, and all that. But even still, um, they're all, all these people are going to come back and there's going to be kind of some awesome matches that come out of all this because, all these people that are injured are going to want their spot. Yeah, back. exactly. So and they gotta, yep. There's going to be some great matches. And, you know, wrestling scripted, um, it's obviously not fake from this laundry list of injuries. But to see some of this emotion from some of these people, it, it's going to be great. And I think that I try to make a, a positive out of a, a negative. And I think that once these guys come back, guys and girls, uh, to see some of these amazing matches that are going to come from this, uh, it's really going to be worth it. Yeah, and uh, you know, just thinking ahead, you know, with a few months to go, like, do do you jump the gun? Do you say, hey, maybe we should bring Finn Balor up just to to have a spot at Mania? Does that even work, or is it too soon, or do we just wait for after Mania? Especially at least the NXT guys on your mind. I mean, uh, who else could they bring up from NXT to at least 
debut, maybe even at the Royal Rumble, to to at least have a somewhat of a spot at WrestleMania. Here's here's my thinking. Um, they're needing WrestleMania moments and WrestleMania matches. There's nothing saying that they can't debut as NXT wrestlers at WrestleMania. Mm. They can have an NXT championship match at WrestleMania. I mean, yeah. or the, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Some of the, I mean, Hideo Itami was in there last year. Like, they can have some of the people be in some of these events. Um, I, I definitely think that you can do it in a smart way because if they bring Finn up right now just for that reason, only then there may be some issues down the road because people want to see him there, but yeah. he's still got time in NXT yet. It's it's fairly early. I to be honest, um, it's it's hard for me to see a lot of these guys get called up because we talked about this in a previous episode um, about sometimes it's not always the best for these people when they get called up. Sure, and um, I would hate to see someone get the Adam Rose or Ascension Ugh. treatment from, you know, coming up too soon. Yeah, and, you know, that's the thing, too, like, with these injuries. Now, who steps up without even – without NXT, then you have within the current roster, um, you know, now, like you said, too, the spotlight's on, like, Dean Ambrose, Kevin Owens, guys like that. You know, now they kind of have a little bit better of a spot now, if you if you will, uh, going towards WrestleMania without even bringing any other names in. So that might be interesting. I'm, I'm kind of curious to what they will do at, uh, at WrestleMania to where do we do we, uh, you know, money at the bank was a, a, a staple for it to where I know, and I know this episode is about injuries, too, but it's like we're trying to fix the injury problem. Like, what do you do now that all these guys are out? Um, you know, this is the reality of it, though. When you get all these guys injured, now you got to go into like a plan B mode. What's your plan B to, to fix the situation, at least? Because, you know, they're going to be going to Texas. They got to fill this huge stadium. Uh, and, you know, you kind of want big names. You want big matches. So what kind of big matches are going to fix this, especially with all these bigger names that are out? You know, like we mentioned, Cena's is not going to be there. Seth Rollins won't be ready. Maybe Randy Orton could be, but, but right now he's not around. Daniel Bryan isn't even on the list right now. Sting is definitely not going to probably be ever wrestling again for WWE. All in all, out of all these injuries, you know, it's definitely, it's more than injuries, pretty much what we're trying to get to, to where as soon as you have these guys injured, you know the plan B has to come has to come in and step in, and you know a lot of these names are, are going to get a, a better spot on the card. And you know this is the reality of uh, the sport because a lot of guys probably held back because one guy is good and he's in a good spot or whatever, but now he's injured. Now what do you do with him? Now you got to kind of look to the plan B and move this guy up uh, in, into his place. So well, and you have to think about this too that some of these people may never regain their spot. I mean, yeah, that's it. You look at Daniel Bryan right now; he's been cleared by certain doctors but WWE doctors won't clear him. Yeah. So his future is really in the hands of the WWE. And, um, you know, we'll, I think it's important to not only talk about the injuries that have happened now, but maybe some of them that have happened in the past that have been really detrimental to those people's career. And I'm not saying this with a lot of pleasure in my, in my mind, but uh, the one that comes to mind to me is Bret Hart. And, Back at Starcade '99, it was Brett versus Goldberg, and Goldberg went to do somewhat of like a I call it um, well I, guess, I don't know if it's a crescent kick or not, but he does like a side kick, almost like a sweet chin music, and hits Bret Hart, and then Bret Hart goes down with a concussion. Um, after that, he has a stroke, and then his yep. career's pretty much over. Well, so, well, that's I mean, even focusing on that, we can, we'll, we'll get to some of those in the past, but uh, I'll tell you this right now, um, with all these injuries, do you feel that? Not just necessarily WWE, but especially WWE, to where they've seen like they've been really safe with wrestling the past few years. You know, you can't do certain moves, you can't do this and that. But as being as safe as they as they have been, look at the injury list. Where how are these guys getting so injured, especially when they're at least being so safe? Well, I think that, it, like I said, you have to look at what those injuries are. A lot of them are arm, and a lot of them are our neck. Mm-hmm. So. Um, obviously if you look back at the video of Seth Rollins, it, it was just, a um, you know, perfect timing, I guess is what you call it. But like he blew his knee out because he hopped off the rope and, and that was that. But, um, maybe it's time just like in the NFL, they're looking at the concussion issue. So maybe it's time for the WWE to look at their, their, their neck or their arm. I mean, you know, John Cena, if you look at him, he does a lot of lifting. 
they they all do a lot of like weights and all that stuff. But John Cena's move sets involve him picking people up and and putting them down. Like I pick things <laughs> up them. and I I put them down. That's what John Cena's moves are. Um, you know what I mean? So Daniel Bryan he does a flying headbutt. Uh, that's gotta not be great with his you know his concussions and and his neck. So it's it's important I think for them to keep an eye on it. Um, do I think that, you know, they should ban more moves or anything like that? No, but I also want these guys to last a really long time because sure. if you look back and not to make this episode really bleak, but <laughs> if you look back at a lot of these wrestlers that we grew up with in the eighties, um, a lot of them are either really in bad shape, uh, like dynamite kid, or some of them have just simply passed away from, from, you know, nagging, nagging injuries or, you know, heart attacks or whatever. So yeah, because I mean, when we just read this whole injury list, I'm just thinking, I'm like, wow, you know, they they cut out a lot of moves. They definitely doing a lot of things that are safer. But then at the end of the day, this year was just horrible for uh, people getting injured. So it should be interesting. But if you have a plan B out there, or what you think you could do with a lot of these guys who are missing uh, on the list on the roster right now, let us know. You know, make sure you head on over to our Twitter. At a wrestling pod, it's our wrestling po- another wrestling podcast. We got to shorten it, uh, so it's a wrestling pod, a wrestling pod, if you will. Uh, you can Facebook us at another wrestling podcast. We're on Instagram, another wrestling podcast. Um, leave us some feedback, comment on the shows. We post all of our shows all over, so leave us a comment. Let us know uh, what you think. All right. Without further ado, joining us right now in the studio is Mickey James. Hardcore country. Hey, hey, can't you see? I'm a rockin' southern girl running wild and free. Hey, I'm walking through the door. High class style country to the core. Joining us on the show today is one of the best women's wrestlers of all time. She is a multi-time champion, a country music superstar, and you can see her wrestling for Global Force Wrestling on January 22nd and 23rd. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the show, Mickey James. <laughs> Mickey, thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, Happy New Year. Uh, you had an amazing 2015. Do you think you'll be able to top it in 2016? I sure hope so. You say it was an amazing 2015, which it was pretty, it was great, but I think we can make 2016 much better. Well, we've got lots to talk about today, but we want to get right into Global Force Wrestling. Um, you've been wrestling all over the world for many different companies, so uh, what was it that drew you to Global Force Wrestling? Um, I think it's the energy, really, and the synergy. I mean, Jeff is great. I've, I've worked for Jeff when TNA first started, you know. So, and I saw what, you know, what he took that to. And now to, like, start out on something new and exciting. And let's face it, the business needs something new and exciting. And I want a place for everybody to work and everybody to make money and have fun. And uh, I think I think GSW is doing great things, you know, like we're – uh, doing the first ever UK live shows. We did those, and then we're going back over in March. And, you know, I know this whole season's getting ready to pick up, and we're going back to some of these baseball stadium shows over the summer, and it's just going to be, I mean, it's been great. And the TVs that we shot in Vegas are amazing, like the quality and, and the backstage segments and everything. It's so unique, and it's shot differently, so differently than any other wrestling uh, that's out there right now. So it's, it's kind of cool to see the, you know, the kind of the mesh of like a little bit of the MMA style as far as like some of the promos or like the, the realism to it, you know? Absolutely. Now, um, you're at a different point in your career. You've uh, been a lot of places. You've, you've conquered them all. Um, with that being said, what are some of your immediate goals in Global Force Wrestling? Do you want to go straight for the championship or... Are you just enjoying being in a different place at a different time? All of the above. Awesome. All of the above. You know, I always, I think it's just my nature to strive to be the best. And every company that I've been in, I've always tried to be, you know, the best female there, or not just the best female, but one of the best talent that they have, um, male or female. 
uh, why why close off your you know goals to just one one little genre there, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. But yeah, so um, I don't know. I have I have big big hopes for GFW not only to win the uh, GFW Women's Championship, but also to kind of like be a staple in in the uh, women's division and hopefully help mold the future talent. Because let's face it, like. I'm not, I, I don't want to wrestle forever for sure, but I, I've always wanted to be involved in the wrestling business in some aspect and whether that is, you know, on camera or behind the camera or helping, you know, mold some of the, the, the newer generation of talent that's coming around and, you know, maybe teach them some of the stuff that I've learned in, in my career from camera angles to promos to working in front of a live audience to working the television crowd. Cause that's two different things, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Sure. Now, uh, Mickey, uh, we here at uh, another wrestling podcast are excited to have you back wrestling in the Northeast uh, on January 22nd, 23rd. You'll be a part of a uh, GFW's historic Northeast tour. Uh, now, do you have any favorite memories of wrestling maybe at the mid Hudson civic center in Poughkeepsie or at least the Northeast? Because this is the first time uh, global force wrestling will be in the Northeast up here. It is. So I'm excited about that. Oh, man. Oh, God. It's hard to, you know, I have so many fond memories of so many different shows I've done all over, and it's just, it's really hard to pinpoint one thing to say, like, oh, that was it. You know, um, some of the best crowds have been in the Northeast because they're so vocal, and they're very, um, some vocal in the best ways, some vocal in the worst ways, right? Like, but, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but vocal nonetheless, which is which is better than not, and uh, so I enjoy I, I I enjoy playing off the crowd and giving them what they want, even if they think even if they don't think it's what they want. Sure. I, you know, it was like even as the bad girl, like that was one of my favorite was playing the bad girl, even though I haven't been able to do it very often in my <laughs> career. Sure. I'm really good at it. I'm a bad girl in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on on January 22nd, you're going to be live at the Mid-Hudson Civic Center, like we just said. Uh, you'll be wrestling indie sensation Kimberly as well as GFW's women's champion, Christina Von Erie. Um, are we going to get to see you add another title to your already legendary resume? Well, I sure hope so. I'm not coming all the way to Kipsy to lose. That's for damn sure. Well... We, is that, uh, copy? Is that, copy? that is not. We are definitely <laughs> on your side. We're rooting for you because mainly Thank I'm you. afraid to get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> I faced Kimberly before, um, obviously, for, you know, I, I faced her in Maryland, and I think she's very, very talented. And isn't um, Deanna Peluso? Is that Deanna Peluso? Is that what I'm saying, right? I think that she is no longer going to be there. We're not 100% sure yet. We heard from her that she may not be on that show. Oh, well, that just made me a little sad. I was looking forward to that. Yes, us too. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, well. Well, you win some, you lose some, or you just don't show up for some. You know what I mean? (laughs) Exactly. Now, uh, uh, it was also announced, too, that you'd be taking part in a huge uh, GFW tour of the United Kingdom in March. Uh, what are some of your favorite things about wrestling overseas? Is there just something different over there that's maybe not, like, over here? You know, I think what it is is when we go wrestle over there, because their audience doesn't see um, – they don't get tours over there, like the big tours or, like, the big uh, U.S. companies. They don't come over very often, like – TNA goes over, what, once a year? WWE goes over twice a year. Now with NXT, they'll probably go over four times a year if you count because they're WWE too, obviously, right? So, yes. um, But in reality, like, that's in, other than that, they have, just like the United States has, you know, their indie federations or whatever, and they have a few, they have some pretty good ones over there. Uh, but I think the, the energy, they get so excited to see you, and they're so grateful and they're so warming and, and inviting and you just, they're so excited that you're there that that energy just transcends throughout the show. Right. So it just brings like that much more out of you and your performance. Awesome. Now travel is a huge part of the wrestling business. Um, what are some of the things that you do to keep busy or sane, uh, on the road while you're traveling? Um, well, I always, well, it's, it's different now, you know, because now instead of 
It's well, let's say I, I it, it's ch- starting to change a little bit more because Donovan's not going on the road with me as much as he had before. But you know, before when I was you know single and fancy free, I would <laughs> always. Yeah, it was. It's crazy how it's you know it's just so silly, but um, you know I would I would wake up in the morning and I would find the local gym and I would go work out for you know my hour and a half to two hours and uh, in between that time I would get my coffee obviously because I cannot function without it and then <laughs> I can't I, it's it's impossible it's like uh that is that is definitely my my fix so and then you know grab lunch and then go to the arena and but now it's like a little bit different obviously. So I have to kind of improvise. Um, but to stay sane, like obviously he, he keeps me a little bit more balanced as far as like, uh, you know, it's not just about me anymore. Like, cause whereas before selfishly, the selfish wrestlers as all wrestlers are me, 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 me. Um, can we, you know, I, I would just worry about that. And now it's just like so much more demanding. And so even when he's not on the road with me, um, I'm still constantly, you know, like checking in on him with the nanny or with whoever he's with and, and, you know, and then, so and it's cool. It's kind of good balance, like being able to take him on the road with me on some when it makes sense. And then others, like I went to Mexico recently for like a week and he didn't go. And that was a big thing. That was a big step, but it was also like one of those, um, necessary steps. So I could, uh, then see that he doesn't need me by his side every waking moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So then I can, now I can start to fully function again as a human and, uh, get back into my, my hustling mode that I'm so used to. Sure. Yeah. Now, now Mickey, uh, speaking of traveling and stuff, is there something in the Mickey James travel bag that you can't leave home without? Um, oh goodness. Well, my boots for one. <laughs> <laughs> um, my headphones. Okay. My headphones. I need my headphones. And I always have a journal or like some type of, not just, not like, I don't care about like, oh, my diary. But I do always have like a notebook that I can jot down thoughts and songs or lyrics or just spots. <laughs> no, I don't do spots as much as it is. <laughs> like I said, is, you know, uh, more of like ideas for like character stuff or promos or like just cool things or sayings or drawings for like a t-shirt ideas or stuff like that. Like I'm still very old school and like with a pen and a paper in that that's, aspect. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but if you do have a diary that you could send us, we would love to read it. I'm sure you would. I turned him <laughs> all of Oh <laughs> Well, um, obviously, you'll be pretty busy with uh, Global Force throughout the upcoming months. But um, after those tours with Global Force, uh, what are you going to be busy with this year? Um, well, I've started to work on some new music, so I'm writing some new, new music. So hopefully go back in the studio and, and start recording a little bit of original stuff. Um, I don't know. I've been pondering this because I've been talking to a publishing company about a uh, book. And I was like, hey, they approached me like a few years ago. And I'm kind of like in that, that mode of like, I don't, I'm still very young, very, and I'm like, oh my gosh, my life is not even halfway over. Like, so I was kind of like uh, torn about writing a book. And but the more I've thought about it and I've sat back for kind of two years and now that I've had Donovan and I go, well, it's not like WWE is banging on my door to come back or like, I don't know, you know, you just don't know as far as what that kind of thing holds. And I was like, well, I do have some really cool stories in my life um, up to this point that a book might be interesting. I don't know. Would it be interesting or would it just be like one of those, would it be like a, a coffee table book? Would it just mm. collect that? No, I think, uh, I, I watched the really extensive high spots interview that you did a, a couple years back. Uh huh. And I thought that was very like entertaining and, uh, informative. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for uh, a Mickey James book. That's for sure. Yeah, and that was only a quarter of it. Oh wow! So I'm surprised that you did. You watch all like five hours of it, or are you going to be creeped out if I say yeah? Um, not completely. <laughs> okay, so I watched. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, I I did. I watched it all. It was it was great. Oh, I'm, that's awesome! No, thank you. I'm honored that you would actually take that much time to watch. What, that's awesome. I'm. Uh, it was partially for research. I'll do that. I'll say that. See, that doesn't so, sound so creepy. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, no, and I was always bummed that in, in WWE, either a an extensive uh, WWE DVD of Mickey James or a book didn't happen. So, no, I think this is... Uh, I, I think know. It's great. I, guess, I guess somewhere secretly deep down inside, and I can say this openly because I'm at that point where I just don't care anymore, but I think somewhere <laughs> deep, deep down inside, I had hoped. And he never would come out and say, but like, oh, I guess I'd always hope that like, oh, yeah, you'll get that one more run. And then maybe they will consider doing like a book or something like that, because I feel like my life story is pretty darn interesting. Um, but, you know, there comes a point where you just go like you can't sit around and wait and hope for things. And, it's, and I certainly am not one to sit around and beg for things. So I think that it's just like you want to do things and you want to live life. I mean, you only live once. Right. So just do it and have fun and don't apologize and just do your thing. Just do your damn thing, man. That's what you can do. There you go. Uh, yeah. Now, <laughs> now uh, Mickey, uh, the fans have spoke uh, and women's wrestling is once again being highlighted in mainstream wrestling. Uh, do you think this will taper off in the future or is women's wrestling here to stay? Um, I sure hope not, but it's one of those things that, like it does go through as I think wrestling, um, goes through gener- generational, like, um, it's like a therapy almost, right? Like, so things that are hot now, mm-hmm. they kind of go back down, and then they come back and they get hot again. And, and so, you know, you look back in time and, like, where there was glow and there was, like, you know, which was all women. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and wow, which a lot of people don't remember, but that was, like, a, a huge thing back then. And um, and it kind of tapered off as well as, like, the credibility of, of women's wrestling and you know, now that, that it's come back around. And I think that the fact that it's 2016 now, I mean, when they're running, running companies, they're CEO of companies, uh, they're congresswomen, they're running for president. I mean, so the fact that a woman can't be as big, if not bigger, a bigger star than any man on the roster is, is, you know, ridiculous. So why, why shouldn't it be? And I think they've proved them, Prove that to be the case as far as like not only having the, them finally listen around and, and come in and bring such the, the divas and, and the knockouts is such a huge staple in the roster and, and looking for like really solid, credible talent, but also like I feel like there's also that uh, dimensional talent too, where it's like you're not looking, and I don't think that everybody, every female, just like I don't think I feel like there's a place for every type of male, like whatever happened to male managers, like, you know what I mean? Like the Jimmy Hart, so the flicks and like, that was money to me. You know, Bobby Heenan, like that was money. Jimmy Cornette, like, so there's, there's places for all kinds of people in the business. You know what I mean? It's just finding your niche and your role and, and what you're best at. Um, but I, I certainly hope that I feel like as far as the championship goes, it should, it should be the same for the women as for the men. And it should be, the supreme athlete, the, the, the best in the world, competing for that championship and nothing less. Mm-hmm. And at where everything else goes, like there's room for managers and there's also room for the girlfriends and the cat fights and all that fun stuff. Because me as a fan, I loved that stuff. It was, it was, it was cool when, you know, Stacey Keebler and Tori Wilson finally went at it over whatever reason. You know what I mean? Because that was cool. But I grew up in a different generation of wrestling, I guess, than mm-hmm. now. You know what I mean? So I just feel like it's all comes full circle. And, it, and who's to say that within 10 years from now, we don't go back to that whole same cycle and it kind of resurfaces again. And then 15 years, like, oh, my gosh, women's wrestling is a huge deal again. You know, it's like it's, it's constant. Sure. Just like I feel like the business in, in, the, in a little bit, the business has kind of felt fallen off. It's like, it's really hard for people. It's hard. How do I say this? Without, it's a lot harder for the guys to get over these days. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because yep. everybody's so aware of what, because we've pretty much given a lot of stuff away. And so everybody's so aware and everybody feels like they're in the end and they're in the know. So then it's like, Oh, well, you know, I want to cheer the bad guy because he does such a great promo and they've forgotten the fact that, it's supposed to be like a theater show. You're supposed to go into the movies and you're supposed to get lost in the characters and have fun. And sure, there is like elements of that where you can respect the performer for their, for their artistry, but at the same time, allow yourself to just get lost in the stories. You know what I mean? Like, and be a fan. It's totally cool to be a fan. Yeah. 
Um, I'm I'm right there with you. Now, did I just ramble, or did that make sense? For what? No, it made it made total sense so much so that I felt like that I was going to ask you if you thought that having some of those alternative roles like whenever you were there you were kind of the resident wrestler and then there were also you know valets and managers and stuff so we were we were in sync well good well good all right now uh obviously you are no no uh stranger to injuries in professional wrestling and throughout 2015 and even into this year 2016 a lot of wwe's top uh talents were injured um, what was the worst injury that you ever had in your career? And as a, a wrestler, how hard is it to come back uh, from an injury after having time off? Oh, wow. Um, fortunately, like, I never had any serious, serious injuries. I tell you, like, I've separated both of my shoulders twice. And they put me out, you know, and, and I came back. On all of them, I probably came back too soon just because you're so not... <laughs> Not in the sense job scared because you, but in the sense of like you know if you step out of the light if you step out too far for too long that somebody is quick to take your spot as they would and as 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 I would if I was waiting in the wings in hopes for that spot you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a bit of that like where we tend to come back a little early or come back too early, you know, just because we're stubborn and we don't want to be out of the line right and we don't want to give up our spot to the next person who's hungry and wants it. Um, but I, I, the scariest thing that probably happened to me was when I did this, uh, I was going for her Corona on Melina. It was live on television and um, it was just like her feet were on the inside and, and I feel like her feet were on the, I can't even remember because I was so spaced out and I was like, you try to, and I've watched it. I think it's on the Botchamania thing, which is awesome. It's always a treat, <laughs> treat when you find yourself on there, right? You're like, Oh, sweet. Good. Good. <laughs> Highlight of my career. Botchamania 27. What? Um, but it, yeah. And I landed and I almost like, I, cause I went to do her Karana. She was, she held on. Right. So I was flipping and I've done this, I've done this move a thousand times, right? Like maybe not a thousand, maybe a hundred. At any rate, when I slipped through, I didn't slip all the way. So I lawn darted myself, like literally lawn darted myself on my neck and it jammed mm-hmm. me. Like I had, I would say, I was like, they said that I had um, just like a severe case of whiplash, but for, for like three weeks I'm sitting there and I couldn't really like turn my head. You know, uh, and it's like, I would have sitting there, like, turning my whole body in order to see things. But, of course, I'm still trying to work and work around it and kind of be tough because I'm in the middle of, like, storylines and everything else, you know? So that was probably the scariest thing because it, it did. It knocked me kind of loopy out in the middle of the rain. It was the first time that that had really happened, so. Lightning Round. Your favorite show to binge watch. Uh, modern family. Awesome. Now, other than yourself, who is the greatest women's wrestler of all time? Other than myself. Of all time? Of all the times. Of all the time. In the world. In the whole world. Oh my god. Sensational Sherry. Alright. If you got to handpick your retirement match, who would you wrestle against? Current or of all time? Or, or of my like of my generation. I'll, I'll say just current to to give you a little bit of a loop on this one. That's currently on television right now. Yeah, currently, uh, currently anywhere right now. Who's still wrestling? Um, if I had to wrestle one retirement match, anyone that's wrestling right at this present moment, I would say Kong because I've never faced her. Okay, awesome. Now. Yeah. Um, you are obviously not only a, a wrestler, but a musician as well. So um, I would say, like, what's the last CD you listen to, but no one has those anymore. So what is just the last musician that you listen to? Um, so, like, um, well, I listened to, like, the techno mix today when I was doing cardio. Does that count? That, sure, that doesn't, sure. That doesn't really count. Like, no, it's like workout music. Um, I would say Adele. Okay. The last, like, and it's the book, like where I've listened to like the album. Yeah, okay, awesome. Now, how about your favorite food? Steak. 
steak. Awesome. I um, love steak and potato girl. I uh, want to know this because we're a bit of a uh, a bit of nerdy people here. But did you go see the new Star Wars? I did not. What's the inside of a movie theater look like? Wow. I haven't seen one in a very long time. I feel like you kind of have your own movie theater, though, like in your house. I wish. I wish. I mean, I have Netflix and I have, you know, on demand. Well, Mickey, uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Everybody listening, January 22nd, 23rd, you will see Mickey James at Global Force Wrestling in Poughkeepsie and down in Rahway, New Jersey. Uh, Mickey, where can the fans keep up with you uh, on social media these days? Well, I just have a new improved website, MickeyJames.com. It's the same it's always been. We've just revamped it a little bit. And there you can find my Twitter, at Mickey James, my Facebook, Mickey L. James, um, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. It's all available on my website, MickeyJames.com. Um, so, yeah, and hopefully I have new exciting stuff for you guys. And I'll see you in Poughkeepsie, which you're giving away free tickets to. How about that? That is correct, and um, we are also going to be part of the VIP experience. We urge all the people that are buying tickets to spend the extra $25. You get to get in early. You get to listen to us yammer on to to the wrestlers, and you get to meet some of the stars of Global Force Wrestling. Um, and I'm, Myself included. Myself yeah, included. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to assume that you may or may not put one of us in a headlock, so if you uh, – if you want to come out and see us get beat up by amazing Mickey James, then definitely spend the extra $25. Love it. Now, Jonathan, you mentioned a little bit earlier uh, in the show, uh, you brought up Bret Hart. Thanks for bringing up Bret Hart because I always have to bring him up on every show. Yeah, I figured you'd like a break. So. But, but an unfortunate reason. Uh, you know, we talked a lot of the present injuries and kind of what, what's going to happen now with all these injuries. Uh, you know, what, what do they have to do? But if we go check our past, because you never, you, you don't really learn from, you don't really learn anything unless you look back on the history of uh, what happened before. Uh, you know, there's a lot of injuries in the past, you know, from the brutal Mick Foley hell in a cell where he was, <laughs> you pretty much thought he would die right in the front, right in front of your eyes, uh, to the, even the tragic Owen Hart, uh, you know, tragically dying in the ring during a stunt that they pulled in the ring. Uh, but Jonathan, let's talk about some of these old, even just injuries, you know, like Steve Austin versus Owen Hart at SummerSlam to where he had that stinger um, live on TV. This is, you know, what ha- he was in a good spot too back then, injured on a pay-per-view, gets the pin, but he was still off for a long time after that. Um, you know, th- these are the things that, what happened in the past though, what can we uh, talk about these? Um, you know, one of the ones that, really get me um was edge um i was actually at bridgeport whenever he retired and i really didn't think it was real i thought it was uh, you know a storyline or whatever um it was it was really scary um you know his neck was just from years and years of issues he i know he had a couple surgeries and he actually you know sought the advice of steve austin and he's like listen like it's the same surgery i had and you know it could and okay, and then you could wrestle, but then one wrong thing, and you're you're paralyzed. So, um, I think that that was really hard for me to watch because when Edge first kind of started, that's when I was you know I was older and I could kind of saw what was happening and followed Edge's career, and then this unfortunate thing happened with his neck, and um, I still think that he had so much left to give and. Would have been awesome to see him go against some of these new guys in NXT, and you know Finn Balor versus Edge would have been an amazing match, yeah. and you know all this stuff. So, um, but he's got to do what's right for him, and obviously, if he if if I was presented with that, like yeah, you can go ahead and wrestle, but one bad yeah, I know, hit right? to the uh, head, sorry. then you're <laughs> then you're paralyzed, and you'll be you know drinking soup from a straw for the rest of your life. Well, what's crazy about the Edge one is that. We saw him, he pretty much retired the night after WrestleMania. So as you were watching him at WrestleMania, not once did you even realize this would be his last match. You know what I mean? So if you, it's, I have to kind of actually go back and watch that again because, you know, watching it, you're just like, oh, okay, it's Edge. You know, you want to watch it, this and that. And then next night, I have to retire. What? This We just saw his, like, you didn't realize that you were witnessing his last match ever. So it's one of those things to where, you know, hey, they went out and did it, but 
that was it for them, you know? So uh, there's a couple other people kind of like that. You know, speaking even uh, of other past things that have happened, you know, from uh, Cactus Jack getting his ear ripped off in uh, Germany, uh, you could probably YouTube that one or maybe WWE Network that one. I don't know if that's even on there. But, uh, you know, a lot of crazy things happen live. Is there anything that you've seen live that happened that was just like, all right, in the past at least, that's not present? Um. Yeah, I think I, w- I mean, I wasn't there live, but um, the 2005 Royal Rumble, whenever the, it was both Batista and Cena that went over the, the rope. Yep. And uh, Vince McMahon came strutting out there and he went to get in the ring and blew out both of his quads. Um, I remember that. And that is one of the, I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's like one of the most memorable things for me because you could just see like the legitimate pain. Yeah. And from everything that you heard about when Triple H went through his, his quad injury in, in 2001, it's, it's got to be like one of the most painful things in the world. And not only did Vince tear one, but to, to almost say to Triple H, I can do anything you can do only better. He tears both of them. And then, like, he just sat in the corner, and I remember just thinking, oh, my God, the guy's got to be in so much. I didn't even know what had happened at that moment, but, like, I knew it was not good because why would he just sit there like that? You know what I mean? And that's why you got to, like, give credit to, to the pro wrestling, to the pro wrestling universe, to Vince McMahon, to all these crazy uh, SOBs on, on the show because, you know, no matter what happens to them, they still continue the show uh, earlier we talked Seth Rollins got injured he still continued to finish the match the whole Steve Austin injury with Owen Hart as bad as it was as horrible as it was he still got the pin on Owen they finished the match and like you know uh, if I get hurt somewhere f- screw whatever I'm doing I'm going home I'm getting an ambulance I'm doing whatever but these guys somehow power through it uh, and you know hats off to you kudos to you whatever you want to say uh, that's what's amazing about some of these pro wrestlers out there that no matter how bad they're injured they still finish the show and uh, guys man I don't know how you do it you know I don't know if it's an equivalent of taking a bullet if you're a police officer to where if you get injured you you finish the match or you know what I mean so regardless of all these injuries that we're talking about, some of them that actually do happen live, you know, it's just amazing how they can still go out there and uh, finish the day with it. So uh, it's crazy. Yeah. And you know what? Like if you look at some of, once again, we're talking about some of the um, lasting injuries. If you look at Shawn Michaels in 1998, he was going against Undertaker at the Royal Rumble and he got thrown, it was a casket match. He got thrown over the rope and his back and watching that, I've seen that clip, you know, 9,000 times, and it doesn't even look like he really hit his back. But, um, you know, his back was kind of shoddy to begin with, and then this kind of all happened at once. And he was out for years, and then he finally came back, and it, you saw the awesome yeah. um, feud between between him and, and Triple H after that. But um, it was it – was, there's a very good possibility that that could have been career – ending and that's what you know like you said you got to give props to these guys and and girls because you don't want to say that like every moment that they're in the ring they could get injured but it's really the you know it it could happen you know what you said with edge you know i think it has the same thing to do with the hbk because uh, after he hurt his back i think he was working injured almost uh, pretty much until uh, wrestlemania where he fought steve austin and you know that was pretty much people thought it was going to be Shawn Michaels' last match. He, him going out there had the mentality saying that he, this was going to be the last match right now. You know, he had to get surgery. He didn't know what was going to happen to him. So it's crazy, man. I, it's it's crazy not knowing your last match, especially in this business, all the injuries that are happening. Some guys are really great. They can come out there, get injured, and then they're done forever. You know, or guys could have such a lengthy career, uh, you know, like Edge, still young guy. And, you know, you never know what happens the next day. That's it, man. It's crazy. One of the things that I think is really crazy to think about is you look back in the day when someone got injured. Say, you know, um, let's say that Ric Flair got to, got injured. Well, and he did. Like, he survived a plane crash. So, But, like, the recovery time back then was so different than what it is now. Yeah. Um, the guys could take a month off because what would happen is they would say – you know, Ric Flair got into it with Dusty Rhodes and Dusty Rhodes broke his leg. And so like yeah, yeah, exactly. Ric Flair literally couldn't be seen out in public <laughs> for like a month unless he had like a, a you know, a cast on and all that stuff. Yep. Now that people are a little more hip to it or whatever, they even show like the surgery photos yeah. and stuff on <laughs> WWE.com, which is crazy. But like John Cena is, you know, everybody makes fun of him, call him super Cena and all that stuff. But I don't know what he's made out of, but 
you know, I was there live when he returned at the Royal Rumble in Madison Square Garden after he tore his his pec off the bone. <laughs> I mean, I have to say that. Like, he literally Ooh. was fighting. He was in a match against Mr. Kennedy, tore his pectoral off the bone. And they were like, well, he's out for, like, you can just call it, like, a year, two years, <laughs> whatever. And then, you know, the the buzzer goes off, John Cena's music hits, and everybody goes just insane because no one expected him to be back that quick. Do you know how long it was, or off the top of your head? I don't know off the top of my head. It's I would like say, months, I mean, though, right? it was a couple months. Yeah. It wasn't It wasn't mm-hmm. anywhere near, I would say it's at least half of what they thought it was yeah. going to be. So. And I, I know a lot of these injuries are serious, and we don't know how long these guys are going to be out, but I'm also wondering if they're really just saving a few big pops for the Royal Rumble. Um, you know, like this whole... <sighs> This whole Daniel Bryan thing. Oh, they're not going to clear me. Not going to clear me. What a huge thing it would be for him to come out at like number thirty. You know what I mean? Something like that. And then I'll be like, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, you got us. Well, but- and like obviously the Daniel Bryan. Everybody wanted him to be in the rumble. Exactly. So yeah. I mean that that could happen. And obviously we we are not hoping that someone, or speculating yeah. or saying it. But it's just one of those things to where okay, we, we've read that whole list off of who's uh, out with injury right now. And uh, it, uh, it will be interesting. I think that's what I'm going to watch the Royal Rumble for, to see who is actually returning from the injured list uh, ahead of time to, to get ready for WrestleMania season. And if we don't see any of these returns, then, you know, something big's got to happen. So anyway, but either way, uh, you know, injuries. We're talked, we talked a lot about injuries, injuries that have happened in the sport. Um, you know, this is this is a real thing. People, as much as they either want to make fun of pro wrestling or whatnot, you know, hey, this, these guys put this put their lives on the line, put their livelihood on the line, and you know this is what happens. So kudos to them, and thank you so much for entertaining us uh, throughout the years. And uh, we wish all and everybody who's injured this year uh, a speedy recovery because we can't wait to see everybody uh, back in the ring in 2016. And if you're listening, please head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. You'll find all of our links to everything and anything associated with us uh and if you missed any interviews today or in the past and uh you just want to hear more stuff make sure you subscribe to us on youtube at youtube.com slash another wrestling pod uh and you can find all their all of our past interviews we have a lot of live things we've done on there some of our live shows uh, and other unique interviews only exclusive for our youtube page coming february 13th at 7 p.m we have a WWE legend, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, doing his 2x4 tour in Poughkeepsie. Guys, laughitup.net for more information. And if you like our show, make sure to check out some of our friends. Check out Main Event Marks. Head on over to Facebook.com slash Main Event Marks. You can join Angry Cooter and his panel of smart Main Event Marks every Thursday at 9 p.m. for an uncensored show for the Marks by the Marks. That's right, and we are here to spread the wealth. Um, If you love professional wrestling, we urge you to go over to pwpnation.com. PWP Nation is a wrestling media website and community that loves professional wrestling. They strive on creating an array of interesting articles and reviews on everything professional wrestling. Head on over to pwpnation.com. Also, be sure to head on over to ProWrestlingSheet.com. It launched in August of this year, and it strives to report on the stories you actually care about in the world of professional wrestling, not just clickbait filling most news sites. Founder and editor-in-chief Ryan Satin previously worked uh, as a senior producer for TMZ.com, where he has helped the company become a force in wrestling reporting, largely in part to his exclusive stories he landed on a constant basis. Make sure you head on over to ProWrestlingSheet.com. Well, that's the show. Uh, We want to thank you all for listening today. Every week we do this show free of charge for you, the fans. If you're wondering how to repay us, we have just the thing. Subscribe to us on iTunes, and while you're there, be sure to rate us and give us a good review. And if you're looking for more information about AWP, then head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. We are all over social media, and you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. And if you're an AWP super fan, you can go show your support by going over to prowrestlingtees.com and buying one of our official AWP shirts. We couldn't do the show without you, so tune in next week for... <sighs> Another wrestling podcast. Mm-hmm.